Having a good action is essential if you are to develop a good piano technique. So let's have a look at the piano action and how it works. On an acoustic piano, the hammer hits the string which vibrates and makes a sound. Now that hammer is connected to the key by a series of levers. And those levers give a feeling of resistance and a feeling of weight each time you press a key down. So how does a digital piano replicate this feeling of resistance and weight in the keys? Well, keyboards and synthesizers, some keyboards and synthesizers use a keyboard action that has a spring at the back of the key. And this spring makes sure that the key returns to the up position. Now, some entry level digital pianos take this principle of a spring keyboard action and they add a weight to each key but it's still based on a spring action. So it's known as a semi-weighted keyboard action. A hammer action keyboard uses actual hammers that rise when you strike the key and then fall back under their own weight. Now this is a much, much more realistic feel. Now better still is a progressive hammer action and this is where the keys get progressively heavier as you move down the keyboard. And this is because on an acoustic grand piano, the strings are thicker, they get progressively thicker as you move down the keyboard range and therefore are heavier to press. The length of the key is also very important. And when I say length, I don't mean the bit that you can see. I'm talking about the bit you can see plus the bit you can't see behind the panel here. And the reason that the overall length is important is the longer the overall length of the key, the further back the pivot point is set, a bit like a seesaw if you like. And that means that the further back the pivot point is set, the easier it is to play up in between the black notes. And this is very important, particularly as you progress through your playing. It means that a digital piano will be uh, a good piano for you as you move through the grade exams. There are two parts to a digital piano key, the surface and what's inside the key. The surface is pretty much the same across all quality digital pianos and that's an ivory feel designed to look like and replicate the feeling of ivory. What's inside the key sometimes varies. Some digital pianos will be plastic some will be wood. To be honest, it doesn't really matter as long as the mass of the key, the density of the key, gives the same feeling of resistance that you would find on an acoustic piano. It doesn't really matter what the key is made of. Finally, it's worth pointing out that actually there is no correct touch to emulate. Many acoustic pianos will vary from one model to the next and indeed grand acoustic pianos tend to have a lighter touch than upright acoustic pianos. So there's no one perfect touch that digital pianos need to emulate. We mustn't forget the pedals. Now on an acoustic piano and on a digital piano, very often you'll find three pedals. The most important of which is the one on the furthest right. And that pedal is called the damper pedal. When we play a note and we take our fingers off the note, the sound ends very abruptly. And that actually makes it quite difficult to join two notes that are far apart. And that's where the damper pedal comes in because it enables you to join those two notes that are far apart without a break in the sound. And it's this ability to sustain the note that gives the damper pedal its nickname of the sustain pedal. On some basic digital pianos, the damper pedal or the sustain pedal is either on or it is off. But on an acoustic piano, it is possible to partially engage the damper pedal so that the sound is partially sustained. And this gives the pianist much, much greater control 
of the effects that they can get. So you could have uh, a scenario where the damper pedals are completely on the strings and dampening the sound, completely off the strings, or partially engaged with the strings, just touching the strings lightly. And that technique is known as half pedaling. Now, some digital pianos can reproduce this technique using a technology called progressive damper action, like you just heard on this piano here. And it gives the pianist much, much greater control of the sustained pedal effect. The outside left pedal softens both the tone and the volume, and that's why it's known as the soft pedal. So it's not just a drop in volume, it softens the tone as well. And the middle pedal is the sostenuto pedal, and that will sustain only the notes that you are playing when you put the pedal down, like this. Now anything else I play is not sustained. So it's a really nice effect for sustaining perhaps a nice big strong bass as I did just then and then you can noodle along over the top.